Our class today is going to focus on the idea of impermanence. And there was a philosopher thousands of years ago, his name was Heraclitus, and he said, you cannot bathe in the same river twice. And we all know that's true. Everything changes. The only constant we have in life is that things change. And the problem is we're attached to things. We, we understand that things change. You know, we, we gain weight, we lose weight, we get more money, we lose money. Our health changes, our living situations change, the seasons change. And even just looking at the clock, the minutes are going by. Everything changes. But the problem is when we have a, a time when things are going well, we want to hold on. We want to grasp. We want to hold on to that moment. And when things aren't going so well, we want to push them away. So it's that whole push-pull of clinging and avoidance. <clears throat> and what Buddhism teaches is that we should celebrate impermanence and serve it as a reminder to really enjoy the present moment and to be fully present whatever is showing up in your life. A good practice off the mat is to just get outside, go for a walk, notice the changes in nature. I mean, we've just been through the fall and we've watched the leaves turn and fall. Now we're gonna be coming into winter and things will change again. And on the mat, we can adapt that concept of impermanence to watching how our bodies respond to the different movements, to the different breaths. And we all know we're not exactly the same people that we are today, that we were yesterday, or that we will be tomorrow. So to invite yourself to really be aware of who you are, body, mind, spirit, energy, in this particular moment. So let's begin. So just finding a comfortable way to sit. We're going to do our centering. We're going to do some upper body warm-ups, and then we'll do some, some focused breathing with the active exhale and the three-part breath. So just taking a moment to let yourself land in your practice, allowing your eyes to close. Beginning to notice what's showing up for you in this moment, whether it's physical or emotional or mental. Gently directing your attention towards the sensation of the breath. Breath coming in and breath coming out. Even the breath is impermanent, always changing. And maybe setting as your intention for our time together that you really notice how things change, whether it's a sensation, a thought, or an emotion, and to embrace impermanence. Let's just take a few more conscious breaths here. And then when you complete that exhale, bringing your hands to prayer position at your heart. And let's combine our voices in the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Om. Om. 
Shanti, peace. Let's breathe the arms up and just reach up towards the sky. Press your feet into the floor. Drop your shoulders. And then climbing hand over hand. As I mentioned, we're just going to open up the upper body just a little bit, warming up before we do some breathing. Reaching and pulling. And then reaching up again with both hands. Let's interlace the fingers and then press the palms up towards the ceiling. So your arms are framing your head. Let's take a breath in and just begin to sway from side to side. Beginning to connect with the breath each time you lift up, breathing in, and each time you arch to the side, breathing out. Everybody's feeling a little looser just doing this. Good. And then bringing your hands down to your shoulders, let's just rotate to the right, to the left. Warming up all those muscles between the ribs. and back to center and lower your hands. <clears throat> so we'll begin our breathing practice by uh, doing a few rounds of the active exhale. And just a reminder on how we do that, we breathe in and then exhale as you fold forward three times. There'll be a little bit of breath holding, but if that's not comfortable for you, just find a rhythm that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> So breathing in deeply, separating your feet because you're going to be folding forward. And then exhale three times forward. See if you can remove that last little bit of the exhale. Good. Hold the body empty. Release the hold. Breathe in as you sit up. Holding the breath in just for a moment. and then take a couple of natural breaths. And we'll do that twice more. Breathing in, exhaling forward through the mouth. Blow every little bit of the breath out, hold the body empty, relax your shoulders, relax your neck. Release the hold, breathe in. And hold the breath in, but hold the breath in gently. Release the hold and breathe. And last time, breathing in and exhaling. Body stays empty. Release that hold, breathe in, fill your body, hold the breath in, soften around the hold. And then relax and breathe. So we'll review the three part breath. And what I'd like you to focus on in the three-part breath is noticing the place where the breath turns around. In other words, where the inhale becomes the exhale and where the exhale becomes the inhale. You can close your eyes or leave them open, whatever feels most comfortable to you. We're going to be breathing in through the nose and out through either the nose or the mouth. So allowing your belly to soften so that as you breathe in, the belly expands like a balloon and the breath moves up to your chest and shoulders. And then exhaling top down, shoulders, chest, and belly. Breathing in and breathing out. 
So you may find that you're breathing a little faster or a little slower than I am, and that's perfectly fine. But again, what I'd like you to begin to notice is that ever so slight pause where the breath turns around. Inhale, becoming exhale. Exhale, becoming inhale. <clears throat> and if you lose your focus and your mind starts to wander, go back to noticing where you feel the breath most strongly in your body that will help to anchor your attention. Let's just take two or three more breaths just like that. And then let your breath return to normal, just the nice, easy breath, and notice how you feel. What was the effect of that breathing practice on you in this moment? And now allowing your eyes to open, if they're closed, we'll move into the six movements of the spine. So beginning with the dog, breathing in, letting the chest move forward, shoulders back, elbows back, head looks up. And then as you exhale, pressing your back towards the back of the chair, rounding your spine, tucking your chin, breathing in and opening, breathing out and curling up. So making sure there's a space between your back and the back of the chair so you have room to round. Notice how the sensations in your spine are changing as you move. So maybe you felt a little stiff in the beginning and you feel things gradually beginning to loosen. Breathing in and out. So this will be the last time breathing in, filling the lungs completely, shoulders back, elbows back, and then exhaling and rounding, tucking the chin. Squeeze every bit of that breath out and bring it back. And just take a breath before we go to our twist. Starting with the right arm, stretching it out, nice and long. Exhale, bring that palm to your left knee, left hand to the chair. Breathing in and creating length in your spine so you're sitting a little taller. Breathing out, left shoulder floats back. I'm going to cross my left leg over my right for a slightly deeper stretch. Notice how the pose is dynamic, even when you're holding it. Everything changing, the breath, the muscles, the joints. Good, and let's take another breath in, bring ourselves back around to the front and go to the other side. Left arm stretches out, nice and long, palm comes to the right knee, right hand to the chair. Creating that length as you breathe in and a gentle rotation as you breathe out. Remembering to keep the chin lined up right with the center of your chest. I'm gonna cross the right leg over.
Let's take one more deep breath. And then exhale, come back around to the front. So getting ready for the last uh, two of the six movements, we're going to thread the needle, starting with the right arm, stretching it out nice and long, sliding that along your thigh, easing yourself forward. So we move slowly and deliberately so we can stop where it's comfortable for us. I'm going to take my left arm. You can sweep it out to the side or you can bring it up even higher. Move your head just a little bit so you remind it to relax. Notice the change in your breathing as your belly is compressed against your thighs. Good, let's release that breathing in, coming up. Pause for just a moment and we'll go to the other side. Stretching out, threading it through as you slide along. And remember, if your body only allows you to go this far, that's perfectly fine. The practice is your practice. It should be comfortable. Sink into the breath. And let's inhale and sweep that arm back around. Take a breath. And we'll go to some sun salutations. So pressing your palms lightly together in front of your heart. Let's begin by sweeping the arms up. And exhale, reaching back, creating length as you reach back. Breathing in, coming back to mountain. Now we're going to fold forward on an exhale. Let the breath go. Let the folding of the body help you release the breath. Palms to the knees, come up halfway, breath comes in, and we fold again, breath goes out. Inhaling the arms, sweep up again, and we reach back, breathe in, and back to the heart. Remember, every movement is connected with either an inhale or an outhale. So if you lose your place, just remember to breathe and you're most of the way there. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling and exhale, reach it back. Take the breath in and then let it go. Palms to the knees, breath in. Let it go, fold forward. Breath comes in, sweep up. And we reach back back into mountain, and exhaling to the heart. Last time. Reach it back. Breathe in. As you fold forward, think about lengthening over your thighs. Palms to the knees, breath in. Letting it go as you fold forward. Inhaling, arms sweeping up. Drawing that breath in, exhale, letting it go. Take the breath into mountain and back to the heart where we pause for just a moment to notice and breathe. We're gonna do a forward fold and we're gonna do it in stages. I'm gonna turn my chair sideways, just in case you've forgotten how we do this and how we advance the pose. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So for the most gentle version of the fold, I'm gonna separate my feet, and my feet are underneath my knees, knees lined up with the hips, and my back away from the back of the chair. And we're gonna do this as a wave. So it's gonna be breathing forward and then rounding back. So it's sort of like a, a moving cat and dog stretch. So we're gonna begin just by sweeping forward and rounding back, sweeping forward, 
Try to make your spine as fluid as you can. Good. The stretch, a little more intense. I'm going to move my feet away, maybe, oh, a foot or so, and begin to reach and stretch. So the further away the feet move, the more you'll feel the stretch up into the hamstrings. But whatever is best for you. So I'm gonna extend the feet a little more. There's always a little bit of a bend in the knee. Just be careful you don't slide off your chair. The next time I come forward at whatever level my feet are, I'm going to hold here. And you can actually hold on to the legs of your chair as you ease yourself forward. Head is relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. Breath is steady. Noticing your thoughts. Good, and on an inhale, we'll release that. You can either walk your hands up your legs or engage your core and hinge up. Bring your feet back, take a moment to notice. Great, so that's a great stretch to do for your hamstrings, particularly if um, a standing forward fold is not something that feels safe and accessible to you. Good. So I'm gonna bend my right knee and I'm just gonna draw it in towards my chest. My back is still away from the back of the chair and I'm gonna circle the ankle. Let's go the other way with the foot. Good. So relaxing your shoulders as you draw that knee in a little closer and if you'd like, to challenge yourself. You can round your spine on an exhale and bring your forehead towards your knee. So breath in and roll forward. So try not to use your shoulders while you're doing this. So you want to just be bringing the forehead towards the knee. Good, and then let that go. Take a breath and we'll go into the figure four stretch on this side. Hi, Suki. How are you? So crossing wherever is comfortable for you. Remember your options are ankles, knees, or I prefer putting my foot up on top of my thigh. Take a minute to lengthen from your hips up and you might feel a deeper stretch just by doing that. I'm gonna gently press down on the knee, and pull up on the foot, and add a little bit more intensity by leaning forward. So moving slowly so you can stop at whatever your comfort level is. Good, let's release that now on an in-breath coming up and on crossing. Take a breath and we'll go to the other side. So we're gonna bend that left knee and draw it up. So I'm just interlacing my fingers below the knee, but you can hold on behind the thigh or you can even <clears throat> loop a yoga tie, <clears throat> excuse me, around your thigh. circling the ankle. One direction and the other. Are you gonna do Daga? I think you're gonna do some Daga. My dogs like Savasana the best. One is snoring happily as we do this. So again, I'm, you can add the challenge if you like by bringing your forehead to your knee. Don't do it on an exhale, breathing in. Letting your spine round, knee comes up, forehead comes down. 
Maybe they connect, maybe they don't. Good, breathing in on a release and coming into the figure four stretch. Sitting up nice and tall. And the stretches are gonna feel very different depending on maybe what you, how you slept the night before or what activity you did the day before. So just know that one really good experience of impermanence. So pressing down on the knee, pulling up on the foot, relaxing those shoulders, adding whatever degree of intensity you like. Um, I like to give my head a little bit of a shake and that reminds me to relax the neck area. Good, and on an inhale. Let's release that and come on up. We're gonna work on the, the moon salutation and we're going to do it two times. We'll do it seated and then I will also um, come up to standing and lead it standing. But if <clears throat> that's not something that's accessible for you today, you can always do it twice seated. That's fine. So I'm gonna breathe my arms up, take a minute to lengthen from the fingertips. Good. If you find that your shoulders are really bunching up towards your ears, you can separate your hands a little bit wider. I'm going to interlace my fingers here and my arms are right alongside my ears. So take a breath in and then as you exhale, arch over to the right. So allow that lower arm to stay straight. You don't want to let the elbow bend. You want to keep it nice and straight. Keep both sit bones on the chair. On an inhale, bring it back through center. And then we're going to arch to the left. Can you still feel both feet on the floor? Can you still feel your sit bones? Great, inhale, come up, and now we're gonna come into a back bend. So if bending back is not comfortable for you with your arms like this, you can separate your arms out to airplane wings, or you can place your palms on either side of your sacrum. Those are all fine. So breathe in, create some length, and then reach back. Again, the arms are alongside your head. Great, inhale up to center. Now we're going to forward fold. So as you forward fold, think about bending right from your hip crease. Reaching forward, keeping the arms alongside the head. And then when you get about the halfway point, you could just let yourself melt over the feet. And relax. And give your dog a pet. So I'm going to come out of the pose now. I'm going to re-engage my arms. Excuse me, Suki and come all the way up. Reach up one more time, nice and tall, and then side bend to the left. Breathe it up, and side bend to the right. And bring it up, and let's come back to the heart. Take some breaths. I'm gonna come up to standing now and lead that whole series again. But as I mentioned, if you're more comfortable seated, by all means, repeat it in a seated position. 
You can also, if you're not quite sure about how your balance is today, you can stand at the back of the chair and just do one arm at a time. That's also an option. Okay. So let's breathe the arms up. Take a minute to lengthen. Good. Breathe in and exhale, arch to the right. So I'm allowing my left hip to move out to the side, opposite. You wanna feel both feet equally on the floor. It's good for balance. Good, inhale, come on up. Lengthen up a little bit and let's go to the other side. Bring it up. For the back bend, remember your choices are to leave the arms where they are or bring them out to the side or actually supporting the lower back if that feels better. So take a nice deep breath in and reach and lengthen. So your hips are gonna move slightly forward as you do this. Inhale up, and we're gonna come into our forward fold now. So hinging right at the hip crease, lengthening out, lengthening out, and then relaxing all the way down. Take a breath. Re-engage your arms, frame your head. Let's come all the way up. Great. Half moon to the left. Breathe it up. Lengthen a little bit as you come through center and then exhaling to the right. Let's breathe it up and fully mindfully returning your hands to your heart and just notice how you feel. And that's a great series for improving breathing because you're really warming up all of these little muscles between the ribs, which are so important. Okay. So let's shift our weight to the leg closest to the chair. Again, a little bit of flex in the knee. I'm gonna to begin to lift my left foot. So we're just gonna be getting ready for tree pose. So we're bringing the knee up, softening that supporting leg. Let's take that knee out to the side and bring it to a position that works. So it could be on the floor, you could keep the foot up here if you like. Some of you maybe have the flexibility to bring the foot up into the groin. That's entirely up to you. One hand or both hands for the branches. Reaching up. And breathing. Notice where your thoughts go. And again, talking about impermanence, notice the little adjustments that your body is making just to stay balanced. Good, and release that. Release your foot and step the feet apart in preparation for triangle. So I'm gonna turn my right foot so it's facing the chair and the left foot turns in slightly. And it's really important to turn that other foot in a little bit to free your hips so that they can, they can move. The hips are facing forward. Left arm reaches up, stretch nice and long and begin to arch to the side. Both knees are soft. You can release the chair if you don't need the hand for balance. Inhale, come all the way up. Lower that hand down. 
and we'll do a little counter stretch. So getting ready for the straight legged runner stretch, I'm going to turn both feet so they're facing the chair. You can narrow your stance a little bit. My hips are also facing the chair. So this is another one of those flat back stretches where we're thinking about reaching, reaching, reaching. Hands can come to the seat of the chair if you like. Or you can bring the hands all the way down, nose to the knees. And breathe. And to release that, you can either just bring your hands to your hips and arch up, or you can walk your hands up the chair, come into a little bit of a back bend. Good. So let's do our other version of tree pose. I've got a message on my computer here. I'm just gonna shut that off. So this is the one where the foot is up on the chair, and this is a nice alternative if balance is something that you um, struggle a little bit with, so you can use the chair as a support. So my, my knee is bent, my foot is up on the chair, the leg closest to the chair. I can either keep my right hand on the chair or I can release it to build my branches. Here we go. Flatten that supporting foot against the floor and breathe. Find something to love about this pose. Good, release your hands, release your foot and take a moment to take a couple of breaths before we do all of that on the second side. So starting with the wind reliever pose, I'm gonna shift my weight to my left leg, begin to lift my right foot, bending the knee, holding on. Again, even if the foot comes up a little bit, that's fine, doesn't have to come up as high as mine is. Make sure that supporting knee is a little bit soft. Great. And let's prepare for tree. Rikshasana. One hand or two, your choice. So let your branches reach as high as they can as you ground your feet into the mat or the floor. Think of them as your roots, your stability. But remember, even trees have to sway in the wind. They have to move, they have to respond. Great, lower your hands and we'll set up for triangle. So separating the feet, Left foot turns towards the chair, right foot turns in slightly. And let's reach up with that right arm and begin to arch. Again, notice if you've locked your knees, you wanna keep them a little bit soft. You can release your hand if you don't need it for balance. Adjust your gaze wherever it feels comfortable. Let's take one more nice deep breath here. And then breathing in, lowering that hand, <clears throat> coming into our counter stretch. <clears throat> Good, and let's get ready for runner stretch. So both feet are facing the chair now. Take a breath in and again, hinging right from the hip crease. Reach your torso out. 
adjust your hand position wherever is comfortable. I like to challenge myself a little bit here. I bring my hands to my back. So getting to release, you're gonna use your hands if you need to, or you can just engage your core. Hinge up and into a little bit of a counter stretch. Great. Tree pose. So this time it's the left foot that's gonna be coming up on the chair. Take a minute to really open the hips. So by doing that, you can just place your hand very gently on your knee and guide it back. So the hips, the front of the body is open. One hand or two for your branches. And breathe. Feel the whole length of your body breathing. Fingertips right down to the sole of that right foot. How about one more breath here? Go down. And releasing the foot. Take a breath and take a seat. So we'll, we'll do one more seated twist because it's a, a really, I really like it as a way to finish the practice. So just any kind of gentle version of the twist that you'd like to do. giving that energy and twist to the other side, permission to go wherever your body needs it the most. And then breathing it back to center. Let's take a minute to just sit, relax, letting your eyes close if that feels safe and comfortable for you and observing the breath. Paying attention always to not just the breath, but the pauses between the inhale and the exhale. Noticing to what feels different since you've completed your practice. Are your emotions the same? Are your thoughts the same? Does your body feel the same? There's no, no right, no wrong, just noticing. Letting your breath get a little bit deeper and beginning to stretch. Oh, let out some grunts and groans and sighs, whatever feels right. Let's bring our hands to prayer position and celebrate our practice with an om. Oh. Om Shanti, peace. May all beings everywhere know peace. Namaste.
जय भगवान